This here is the Alfa Romeo 2600 Spider. They were made between 1962 and 1968. The production volume was 11,346. Of those, only 2,255 were the Spider. The most common one is going to be the 6,999 volume production of the Sprint, which is the Coupe. 2,092 of them were the Berlina, which is the sedan. 105 were the Sprint Zagatos. And 54 were the OSI Deluxe. This is going to have a uh, 2.6 liter inline six. And I'll show you under the hood. We'll just walk around a little bit. Now, this here is a 1962. The car, they would weigh somewhere around 2,600 to right about 3,000 pounds. And it was a pretty executive vehicle. The wealthier types back in the day that would own these. And the value of them have gone up quite a bit, naturally. It's this really gorgeous red, kind of a wine red color. It reminds me a lot of this Mitsubishi that has a metallic flake in it, but you can see a lot of similarities in this. I think this wears it much better, of course. There's a lot of charm in these older cars. So the funny thing about this is it just came out of the body shop and then was parked for about three years. <laughs> I say parked, but it hasn't run in maybe five years. And it's got a huge inline six dual overhead cam engine, which was very, I guess, less common. I'm a Volvo guy. You know that if you watch the channel because I deal with a lot of the cast iron non-cross flow heads, so you've got exhaust and intake manifold on one side. But just look at the scope of this thing. She's gigantic. Triple Solex side draft carburetors. I think they're 40 millimeter on those throats. I am not sure. It's funny with all the things being so large, the distributor is relatively small. It's about the size of a four cylinder distributor cap. I'm used to the uh, inline six on the Volvo having a much wider cap. Beefy blocks for motor mounts. Typical gearbox steering. Now, if this were my car, I would not have just done a repainting and not changed anything else because you could see a lot of the, it's not rust, it's just old glue and old glue and surface rust. I, I wouldn't tolerate that. I would have probably had it all repainted inside and out. I don't like looking inside of doors on cars and seeing that. Dust and grease, old paint, old primer. Not a lot of rust. I mean, the car's pretty good shape overall. The predecessor to the 2600 was the Alfa Romeo 2000 Spider. That had the four cylinder, which was a two liter engine. And before that was the 1900, you guessed it, a 1.9 liter engine. The body for the 2600 is built by Touring. That's the coach builder. And there is so much information, even if we're going into the super legera method, and it's just all this richness of information that I have no idea what I'm talking about. But it is uh, worth noting that the body for this car is built by Touring, whereas the Sprint Zagato would be built by Zagato. The Berlina, the sedan is the widest, the longest, and the longest wheelbase out of all of them. The Spider is the shortest wheelbase, so it's um, about nine inches shorter in the wheelbase, at, sitting at 98.4 versus the Berlina at 107. So the engine in the Berlina only had a double Solex and it had a low compression ratio, 8.5 to 1, 130 brake horsepower, 175 kilometer per hour is the top speed, which is 109 in miles. The Sprint, the Spider, the Berlina Deluxe all had the triple Solex with a 9.0 to 1 compression ratio, making 145 brake horsepower, so an improvement of 15 horsepower. And the top speed went up to 200 kilometers an hour, which is 120 miles per hour. The Sprint Zagato, also the same, but it actually, for whatever reason, with the triple Solex, the same displacement of 2584 cc's made 165 brake horsepower and had a top speed of 134 miles per hour, which is another 15 kilometers added on top of that. And this from Wikipedia directly. From a sales point of view, the 2600 models were not a success, despite deserved acclaim for their excellent engine. The poor sales were not only due to the elevated prices of the 2600 models. The cars did not compare well with contemporary products, including those of Alfa Romeo itself. So the factory decided, correctly as it turned out, to concentrate their limited development resources on the midsize Julia, which was introduced about the same time. The flagship 2600 range was only a minor facelift from the 2000 range and a new engine, as well as all that the factory could do with the resources available. The 1900 series of engine all the way up to 1950, that was a cast iron block with an aluminum head, whereas this is all aluminum as we saw. 
While the engine might seem to be new, on Wikipedia they're saying that the 2600 had a running gear that was already a dozen years old at introduction, since it was essentially a restyling of the 1900s. This engine is big, and it added a lot of weight and length to the front of the car, and it did not do much for stability or handling. Because the 2600 was a flagship Alfa Romeo model, the expectations were pretty high, and both critics and customers quickly spotted the deficiencies, both on paper and on the road. For example, tires fitted on the 2600 were only 10 millimeters wider than the 155.15 tires that were on the Giulietta, though the 2600 had considerably more power and more weight. So when the new Giulia appeared with completely new running gear, or that's the engine transmission, the 2600 was shown up even more. Another reason for slow sales was styling and concept. The Berlina styling was not really viewed positively, and that reflected especially in the poor sales for this model. While most Alfa Romeo sedans in the Marquis history outsold the more specialized sporting models at the same time, the 2600 Berlina did not outsell the 2600 Sprint or Spider. And I can see why, the Spider is much more attractive. And the Spider also had styling which was to be derivative of the smaller stablemate, the Giulietta Spider. It's a very good looking car, but it seemed to lack a lot of the smaller car's grace and balance. The larger 2600's handling also suffered perhaps unfair comparison with that of the Giulietta Spider. This is an important factor in a car with sporting pretensions. One sales point in its favor was that it was a four-seater convertible, though the rear two seats were basically for luggage, they were pretty cramped. The Sprint, however, is the one that made more of an impression. It was a large grand touring coupe which could seat four adults in comfort over long journeys at high speeds. As such, it did not suffer unfair comparisons to other models in the Alpha range like we saw with the Giulietta Spider. In that mode of operation, oriented more towards fast touring than sports driving, the agility and the handling balance of the smaller Alphas mattered less, while the stability and smoother ride of the larger cars, with the wide power and torque band of the six-cylinder engine, came onto its own. Here's a fun bit. A certain number of 2600 Sprints were purchased by the Italian government and specially equipped and modified to be used as police patrol cars, nicknamed Pantera, Panther, from the emblem of the Rapid Intervention Team. The cars were very suitable for high-speed pursuits to counter the increase in armed robberies by motorized gangs in 1960 Italy, and appeared in quite a few genre movies of the time. At the top of Alpha's range, the 2600 was replaced by the 1750 models in 1968. The 1750s were the refined version of the 1600 CC Giulia range, which continued in production, so once more, Alfa Romeo flagship was a derivative product created by upgrading the motor of an existing range and carrying out a minor restyling. I don't blame them. With limited resources, sometimes you gotta do small changes to keep things fresh. The fact that the cars are rare and their parts are either dedicated to the 2600 range or derived from even earlier alphas means that owners need to dedicate a lot of effort and resources to restore and maintain. Very few 2600 Berlinas have found dedicated owners in the decades since the model was introduced and discontinued. Therefore, very few have survived. 2600 SZs, that's the Zagato, are extremely rare since they only made 105 of them, and they are the most valuable in the range. The 2600 OSI Deluxe has always been extremely rare, but there are no signs of it having become particularly desirable as a collector's item. Well, there's a brief overview on the history of the 2600s and the different models that were there. It seems like the Spider, this one here, is the most attractive and when it's all put together, it should be a beautiful car. And as I unpack boxes, I'm going to discover the madness that is Italian engineering. Thanks for watching. That snake's eating a person.